In this video I'm going to work out two specific examples uh, using implicit differentiation. Um, and I want to make note here to begin with, um, I use a y prime notation when I do my implicit differentiation. However, a lot of college professors will use the dy over dx notation. It's the exact same thing, um, working out the problem with either notation. Uh, to me, I just kind of think that that y prime makes the equation um, not look so complicated. So when I work these examples out, I'll be using the y prime. All right, so for this first example, I want to do um, the derivative of 2xy minus y squared equals 1. Okay, so I'm going to indicate that I am taking the derivative of both sides of the equation. So I'm going to do d dx of 2xy minus y squared on this side, and then I'll show it on the other side as well, d dx of 1. Okay, that's just telling the person that's looking at your work that, okay, now I'm taking the derivative of both sides. All right, this is implicit differentiation, which is going to involve that chain rule every time we have a y in our expression somewhere. Okay, now on this first one, as I look at this right here, I'm going to see product rule. So when I uh, use the derivative, I'm going to have to do product rule. I usually group together that coefficient 2x as my first product and then say times y for my product rule there. So implementing product rule right here, all right, I'm going to have the first 2x times the derivative of y. Okay, so derivative of y is going to be 1, and then we have to do the chain rule because it's implicit differentiation. So 1 y prime plus the second times the derivative of the first. Derivative of 2x is just going to be a 2. All right, so all of this comes from just the product rule right there. All right, now minus the derivative of y squared is going to be a 2y with a little power of 1 right there, and then chain rule because it's a y. So y prime equals derivative of 1 there is going to be 0. Okay, usually on the next step I go through and I usually clean this up a little bit just so that I don't have all the little dots in there and put coefficients in front. So this is a 2xy prime plus a 2y minus a 2y y prime equals 0. Alright, now we are trying to solve for y prime. So the terms, every term that has a y prime in it stays on the left hand side. All other terms are going to go to the right. So 2xy prime will stay on this left side minus 2y y prime. That's going to stay on this side. Alright, I'm going to subtract 2y from both sides of the equation a minus 2y. Alright, ultimate goal here is to um, solve for y prime, so I'm going to factor out the y prime. That'll leave me in this first term a 2x minus 2y. And then equals negative 2y. Alright, I'm going to solve for y prime, so I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by the 2x minus 2y. So I'm going to have a y prime equals a negative 2y on top divided by that 2x minus 2y. All right, looking at that, I can see I've got a common factor there, so I can take out the 2 on the bottom. Let's do that up here. y prime equals a negative 2y over, take out a 2, that'd leave me with an x minus y. All right, which now lets me legally cancel out those 2's. And then y prime is equal to negative y over x minus y. Okay, so nice little example there. Everything's straightforward on that implicit differentiation. Had a product rule and a power rule in there, so this one was not very complicated at all. Okay, now if we take a look at a second example, this one um, is going to be a step up just a little bit, all right, because of what's within the problem here. Um, here's my problem that I want to do implicit differentiation on. That's just going to be a regular power rule. This one right here, though, this is an x raised to the y. All right, so this is no longer constant. It's not a number. So I'm not going to be able to just do regular power rule on that. Um, really what has to take place on this one is a logarithmic differentiation. All right, but you don't necessarily want to have to show that or all of that inside your implicit differentiation problem. It would make it really, really messy. So um, I've kind of wrote a generalized rule over here. If you memorize this rule, all right, it's the result of your logarithmic differentiation of how to do, you know, a function raised to a function like this. All right, so if I'm trying to take the derivative, 
of a function raised to another function, all right, that will be the base function raised to the exponent function multiplied by the derivative of the natural log of the base function times the exponent function. Okay, so it's a, it is a, another one more formula to memorize, but it will make doing this implicit differentiation um, a lot easier. Okay, so as we start this, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides of my equation. So I'm going to do d dx notation, x to the third plus 3x raised to the y plus y to the third, and d dx of 8. All right, now when I start my um, differentiation here, the um, x to the third will be normal. So I'll have a 3x squared. All right, then when I do this one, I'm going to want to keep that 3 out in front the whole time and just do the formula on the x to the y. So I'm going to put big square brackets there. All right, now following my formula, I need the base and the exponent. So x to the y. All right, now times the derivative of, so d dx, I'm going to go ahead and use that d dx notation again. Um, of the natural log of the base, so the natural log of x times whatever the exponent function is, which is y. Okay, and that, all of that comes from that middle term right there. All right, now I can do the y to the third like normal, so 3y squared, and then because of the chain rule, y prime equals the derivative of that 8 is going to be 0. All right, now in the second line, all right, this right here, I have a product going on here, so I'm going to have to do product rule right there. Okay, so the 3x squared is going to stay the same. That 3, I'm just going to leave out in front right now. This x raised to the y is going to stay right there too. All right, and now I'm going to put my product rule here in a set of parentheses. Okay, so product rule first, so natural log of x times the derivative of the second, so derivative of y is 1, with the chain would be y prime, plus the second, times the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. Alright, so there's the product rule. Now I'm going to close that square bracket for all of that. Alright, and then just finish writing down the rest of the problem. So 3 y squared y prime equals 0. All right, now I've got some cleaning up in here to do. Um, I need to distribute this, since that's a plus sign, that x raised to the y needs to be distributed to both those terms and probably all cleaned up in the same step here. So 3x squared plus the 3 that I'm just going to leave out there for right now. Cleaning this up, it's going to look like an x to the y, natural log of x, y prime. Or put a time sign in there. I could. Could have moved that in front, but don't need to, I guess. And then um, distributing this and multiplying that out, x to the y, y over x, plus 3, y squared, y prime, equals 0. Okay, now I'm ready to distribute the 3 in there. So 3x squared plus, and this time I do, I think I'm going to move that out in, fr in front here. So 3 x raised to the y, y prime, natural log of x, plus a 3, x raised to the y, y over x. Okay, um, let's go ahead and keep that dot in there for just a little bit longer. All right, plus 3, y squared, y prime, equals 0. All right, now at this point, I'm going to go through and find all my terms that have y prime in it. So these two have y prime. So these two are going to stay on the left. The other two terms are going to go to the right-hand side of the equal sign. All right, so I'll have a 3x to the y, y prime, natural log of x, plus, keeping this term, 3y squared, y prime, equals. All right, when they go to the other side of the equal sign, they're going to be minuses. So a minus 3x squared and a minus 3 x raised to the y, y over x. Okay, I'm trying to solve for y prime, so I'm going to factor out the y prime. So a 3x raised to the y, natural log of x, plus a 
y squared. Right hand side's not going to change. Minus 3x squared minus 3x raised to the y times that y over x. All right, now solving for y prime, I'm going to divide both sides by this quantity over here. So I'm going to have a y prime equals on top a negative 3x squared minus 3x raised to the y times that y over x all over 3x to the y natural log of x plus the 3y squared. Okay. Now at this point I can see I've got 3's floating around in there that I can pull out and simplify and then this is also a complex fraction so I'm going to want to get rid of that complex fraction. Alright, so um, actually let's get rid of that complex fraction first. Alright, so um, quickest way would be multiplying through by the least common denominator which would be an x. So basically that means I've got to multiply the top by x, I've got to multiply the bottom by x. Okay, and since I've got a minus sign there and a plus sign there. I'm going to have to distribute to both of those terms. Okay. All right. So let's do that step first before we do any factoring. So let's come up here. I'm going to have a y prime equals. All right. Distributing that, I'm going to have a negative 3x to the third. Now it's going to cancel when I distribute to this term. So minus 3x raised to the y y. On the bottom, all right, um, depends on how much work here you want to do. This first term, I would have, let's write it right here and let's do it in blue. When I distribute these two terms right here, I would have a 3x to the y times another x times a natural log of x. All right, well, right there is like bases. Okay, so when multiplying like bases, we can add those exponents. There's an imaginary one right there. Okay, so I could write this as a 3 x raised to the y plus 1 and then natural log of x and then plus a 3 x y squared. Alright, so 3 x raised to the y plus 1. Got a little sloppy there. Okay, now I still have my 3's. I can factor out 3's and I can even factor out a negative 3 there on top. That'll just pull my negative out in front there. Okay, so let's go ahead and take out a negative 3. Then I'm going to have an x to the third plus an x raised to the y, y, all over pulling out a 3 on the bottom, an x raised to the y plus 1, natural log of x, plus x, y squared. All right, which is going to allow me to cancel those 3's out. And then when I write um, the overall answer, I'm going to pull that negative out in front. So a y prime is equal to a negative x to the third plus x raised to the y, y, all over x raised to the y plus 1, natural log of x, plus an x, y squared, all right, as a final simplified answer. All right, and then here again throughout this whole entire problem, I did use that y prime notation instead of the dy over dx, but I really just think it makes the problem a whole lot cleaner if you don't have that dy over dx in the problem. So just a couple specific examples um, to help someone out that requested those. So if these examples also helped you, go ahead and give me a like. Thanks for watching.